the man who made the Bird Foundation to say a few words of welcome. Uh, Ed is also the chairman of the MIT Enterprise Forum of Israel. Um, he is the f one of the founders of Taiku, which got to uh, annual sales of $45 billion. Um, he is the man that made the Bird Foundation what it is, actually a bridge between the Israeli and the American technology sectors. He wrote dozens of patents and published dozens of articles. And he was the founder of the first Yozma Venture Capital Fund, Germany, currently President Emeritus. Ed, if you please. Thank you. I have to hold. Is this two, two microphones? You can put these in your pockets if you like. Mm, OK. Oh, I can carry them. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Where do you want me to stand? I'm just there. No, stand. That one on hold. OK. You're going to hear from the real speakers in today's <laughs> event interesting facts. You're going to hear things which will probably be actually useful to you. If you're an entrepreneur, will you plan to become one? Will you plan to do it again if you've done it before? So I'm going to spend just a few minutes giving you some irrelevant information on the subject of business schools. And the first piece of highly irrelevant information which I found very interesting was when do you think the first learning institution of some sort was founded and the purpose of which, what is, oh, I've got the wrong bit of paper here, wait a minute. <laughs> ah, catastrophe. Um, was to teach, in fact, commerce. That, that's what they said it was, commerce. Would you believe it was in 1759. 1759, that's a bit older than your 100 years, right? <laughs> um, it was in Lisbon, rather unlikely place. And uh, so specializing in teaching commerce. Um, the oldest business school was created in Paris in 1819. And the oldest business school in America was Wharton, which was founded in 1881. Now, a few scattered facts about business schools and what they do. But I would like to read you a paragraph by which Wharton described itself. And it's 1881, and it has a sort of Victorian flavor to the English, reflecting somehow a more leisurely society than we have today. The purpose of Wharton was, quotes, to provide young men, sorry dear, not women, just plain, provide young men special means of training and of correct instruction in, of, in the knowledge and in the arts of modern finance and economy, both public and private, in order that being well informed and free from delusions upon these important subjects. This guy really thought ahead. We all have a lot of delusions on these subjects, don't we? Or, or either in offices to serve skillfully the community in offices or trust, or remaining in private life may prudently manage their own affairs and aid in maintaining sound financial morality. You might ask what has happened to financial morality in the last two or three years. <laughs> that uh, any CEO or investment banker who isn't in jail probably ought to be. Um, <laughs> the, so I think morality has gone out of the window. In short, to establish means for imparting a liberal ed education in all matters concerning finance and economy. Another fact of no great importance, but interest the thing. How many colleges and universities around the world do you think have MBA programs? What am I bid? Hmm? No bids? 
How many? 50,000. 50,000 college? One five. One five. No, it's 2,092. 2,092 colleges and universities have MBA programs, including Tel Aviv, of course, um, and PACE. Um, 633 of them are certified kosher by the um, Accredited Business School uh, uh, Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. AACSB approved. I'm sure you're AACSB approved, yes. aren't you? Yes. yes, good, okay. So he's one of the 633, so all you have to do is find the other 632. But anyway, I guess the important thing to realize, I think about these dates, where I think they have some significance is, the first industrial revolution took place very successfully without a single person involved who had been trained at a business school because there weren't any. Um, without MBAs, we had financial empires created, the Rothschilds and others, without a single MBA involved. So what they don't teach you in business school is, why are they really necessary? So I'm sure You'll, you'll be able to enlighten us on this subject. Um, but actually, you know, the, the, you're hearing from somebody, and people like myself who never went to business school. Did you ever go? Yes. You did? Oh, okay, sorry. But anyway, those of us who didn't, I guess probably tend to make these snide remarks about business schools. It's probably some sort of Freudian jealousy for not having gone. But I don't really think so. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Good. It always seems the wealthiest people didn't go. <laughs> Bill Gates. I told some people in the thing, I, I, I got my business training at the SOHK. School of Hard Knocks. School of Hard Knocks, right? Uh, you learn on the job, or it's like learning to swim. Well, the alternative is drowning. And it's amazing what an incentive that is to learn how to swim in a big fat hurry if the alternative is somewhat less desirable. And the same is true if you find yourself stuck, as I did, as a physical chemist, running a company which at that time was listed on the New York Stock Exchange and had 30 subsidiaries scattered around the country. Um, anyway, I look forward to hearing the wisdom of our speakers. I admire the people who successfully um, build companies. I think it's still the most exciting thing you can do that's still legal. Um, and uh, the, the benefits and the, the self-rewards of creating something which provides jobs for people, which provides growth for the economy, which provides benefits to the society, that I think this is an unrivaled feeling, isn't it? I mean, it really makes you feel good compared to a lot of the other things people do for a living. So that's all I have to say. Ella, are you going to introduce the speakers? Good. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. And this is whom we chose as speakers today. Uh, we asked Ed Molapsky, a um, venture capitalist, a, an entrepreneur, a researcher um, who has no MBA. We asked uh, Tzvi Amini, who's one of the best known entrepreneurs in Israel, a guru of uh, consumer goods, who won a number of awards and floated uh, two or three companies and at least two uh, stock exchanges and sold the company for $140 million, who has no MBA. Uh, we ask Ofer Shoshana, a serial entrepreneur who's done everything from uh, medical devices to security, storage, internet, and most of this before he took his MBA. And we asked Booth Backenheimer, an entrepreneur and an uh, investor who's now an academic and a professor of uh, business at Pace University. And you will hear from all of those the things that you will not hear in business school. 
Now, what do we really miss in business school? I studied at INSEAD, Fontainebleau, a fairly good business school in Europe. Um, I studied at the Technion, a fairly good business, um, technology school in uh, Haifa. And in both cases, I felt the need for more apprenticeship, okay? I felt that the studies were highly uh, theoretical and I needed more down-to-earth know-how. Um, I feel that in business schools, well, I teach in business school, I teach on the MBA program of the Technion, um, business schools often don't relate well enough to real life issues. These include social equity, the importance of the personal touch with the person you are doing business with. This includes non-business considerations when oftentimes people take decisions rather than using um, you know, various graphs, analysis, um, Excel spreadsheets, etc. They do it either by intuition or because they know a certain person. And there was very little um, uh, involvement of ethics. And sometimes we find that business ethics make a big difference, especially the lack of ethics. The last thing that I found was missing in school were current issues, because when you are being taught research that was already published, this is based on things that happened a number of years ago, and you lack the current today's information in class, all right? And this is what we'll hear about today, as well as further things. And our first speaker today is uh, Tzvi Amini, Tzvika, who founded, who actually made uh, a great change in Keter Plastics, one of Israel's very interesting private companies, private and uh, public. Keter, pri private, still private, public, <laughs> private. <laughs> All right, and uh, then went to uh, start Zag in Hebrew Zag. All right, which was floated on Nasdaq and then sold to Stanley. Stanley Works. Um, over 35 years of industry experience, served as non-executive chairman of the board at Polymer Logistics, and also co-founder and chairman of Hydro Industries, winner of the 2001 Industrial Award, the 2000 Israel Export Award, and the 1998 Kaplan Award, um, considered as one of Israel's past consumer goods guru, and since very recently, the chairman of Shankar, a very, very interesting college which combines design and engineering. Tzvika, if you please. Tzvika will talk about the role of luck in business. Good 